In this lesson, we are going to discuss the calculations associated with the gas laws that we learned about in class. Please have a calculator handy as you work your way through this lesson. First is Boyle's Law. This is the relationship between gas volume and pressure, and it is inverse. Generically, an inverse uh, equation can be written y equals a constant value k over x. If I rearrange this for the constant value, and instead of x and y, use pressure and volume, I get the constant value equals the pressure times the volume. If I choose any two points on my graph, V1P1 and V2P2, I can substitute them into my equation. The constant value equals P1 times V1, and the constant value equals P2 times V2. Since these expressions here are equal to the same constant, they're also equal to one another. So P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. B2. This is an equation that we can use if we have a gas at a given pressure and volume and we change, say, the volume, uh, we can calculate what the pressure should be. Let's use our new equation to solve this sample problem. Notice that there is mention of both pressure and volume and we are actually changing the volume from 45 milliliters to 15 milliliters. So P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. My pressure is 13.5 psi. My volume 45.0 milliliters. I'm going to solve for the pressure when I change the volume to 15 milliliters. The new pressure is 40.5 psi and this should make sense because we decrease the volume so that should increase the pressure. That's Boyle's Law. Next we have Gay-Lussac's Law. This is the relationship between gas temperature and pressure, and it is direct if the temperature is in Kelvin. Generically, Y equals MX plus B would represent the equation for this line with a direct relationship, uh, B, the Y intercept is zero, and if I rearrange for my slope, M, and instead of X and Y, I use my variables, pressure, and temperature. I get pressure divided by temperature. If I pick any two points on my line and call them T1, P1 and T2, P2, I get And since these two expressions are both equal to the same constant, the slope, they're also equal to one another. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. This only works if the temperature is in Kelvin. So if we have a gas at a given pressure and temperature and we change, say, the temperature, we can calculate what should happen to the pressure. Again, as long as that temperature is in Kelvin. Let's use our new equation to solve this sample problem. Notice how we've got pressure and temperature mentioned in the problem and it looks like we're going to change the temperature and calculate what should happen to the pressure. Remember, our temperatures need to be in Kelvin, and we can do that by adding 273. So the pressure initially is 765 millimeters of mercury. 
and that's at a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. But in Kelvin, that's 285, and I'm going to keep my point zero. We want to calculate the new pressure if we change the temperature to negative 4 degrees Celsius, which is 269 Kelvin. I want to keep my point zero there as well. Sig fig wise, uh, we have three sig figs. That's the lowest number of sig figs. And so I'll round my answer to three sig figs. 722 millimeters of mercury. This should make sense because we decreased the temperature, so the pressure should decrease in turn. Next, we have Charles Law. Charles Law and Gay Lussac's Law are very similar. Uh, Charles Law is the relationship between gas temperature and volume. But if the temperature is in Kelvin, we get the same direct relationship that we do with Gay-Lussac's law. So the same ideas are going to apply. Instead of pressure, though, we have volume. And we can end up with this equation that looks very much like Gay-Lussac's law. And again, as long as the temperature is in Kelvin. So if we have a gas at a given volume and temperature, and we change, say, the temperature, we can calculate what the volume should be. Let's use that equation in this next sample problem. You can see that volume and temperature are mentioned. In fact, we are changing the temperature and going to calculate what happens to the volume. The volume is 45.7 liters, and then the temperature, 22.4 degrees Celsius in Kelvin, is 295.4 Kelvin. We added 273. We're going to find the new volume when we change the temperature to 45 degrees Celsius. That's 318 Kelvin. I'm going to round my answer to three sig figs, 49.2 liters. This should make sense as we have increased the temperature, so the volume should increase in turn. Our next gas law is new. It's the combined gas law. And it's exactly what it sounds like, a combination of gas laws. In fact, if you look carefully, you'll see Boyle's law and Gay-Lussac's law and Charles' law. This, of course, is when we're looking at three gas variables, pressure, volume, and temperature, and we're making changes to two of them to calculate the third. Let's use the combined gas law to solve the sample problem. You know it's the combined gas law because you see mention of pressure, KPA, temperature, degrees Celsius, volume, liters, and we're making changes to KPA and degrees Celsius. So pressure, 155 KPA. Okay. Volume, 1 liter. The temperature still must be in Kelvin. Two ninety-eight Kelvin. Okay, we're going to six o five kPa. We're solving for the volume, and the temperature has changed to one hundred twenty-five degrees Celsius. That's three ninety-eight Kelvin. With three sig figs, we get point three four two liters. And finally, 
we have one more new gas law, the ideal gas law. This gas law combines together all four variables that we've been discussing. Pressure, volume, number of particles, which is going to be the mole, we'll talk about that in a minute, and temperature. We're not talking about changing anything, but this is an equation that has all four variables in it. R is a constant value that we're going to be looking up. Before we solve a sample problem, let's talk about the mole a little bit. It is a unit for quantity, and it is abbreviated MOL. Instead of talking about the number of particles, we talk about the mole but it is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. This is called Avogadro's number and was named in honor of him. So if you have a mole of carbon or a mole of carbon dioxide, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in each, whether it be atoms or molecules. This number is experimentally determined and it is based on uh, 12 grams of carbon atoms. These are the values that we'll be using for R in the ideal gas law. We will look up a value based on our pressure and our volume units in the problem. You do not need to memorize this chart. Let's use the ideal gas law to solve this problem. You will notice that there's no mention of changing pressure or temperature or volume. And then you'll also notice um, moles are mentioned in this problem. This is our only calculation that we're going to do with moles. So for pressure, 1.2 atmospheres. It's good to be able to recognize your pressure units. There are so many of them. And we're going to solve for volume. N is for moles, 0.892. R is a constant value that we're going to look up based on our pressure and volume units of atmospheres and liters. And that value is 0 0.0821. And then our temperature needs to still be in Kelvin. So all of these gas law calculations, if they have temperature, temperature has to be in Kelvin. Add 273. So that's 308 Kelvin. And then if you solve for volume, round it to two sig figs based on the 1.2 atmospheres, you get 19 liters. By the way, the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, can also be called PIVNERT for short.